I've been dropped into the Kimberley in North Australia. I'm heading northwest towards the coast, trying to make my way back to civilization. But now I'm getting low on water. And the only thing I can do is to drink my own pee. And this is something I've never done before. And I'm expecting it to be pretty horrible. But I need to keep those fluids going in. It may seem disgusting, but your own urine is safe to drink. <laughs> and if I just peed on the ground, that's all those fluids wasted. God, there's no getting away from it. <clears throat> that really is pretty horrible. It's like warm and it's salty. <sighs> and not, not my favorite. <clears throat> but I've got about a quarter of a bottle now for later as well. Ugh. Urine is actually 95% water and it's sterile when fresh but drink it sooner rather than later, as it's a breeding ground for bacteria. The people who stand the best chance of survival are the ones prepared to push the limits. In 2006, three Mexican fishermen were rescued after a nine-month ordeal adrift on the Pacific Ocean. They drank turtle blood and their own urine. It's only because they were prepared to go to these extremes that they are alive today. but urine alone is not going to be enough in this heat. I need to find a source of water as soon as I can. Just at rest, I should be drinking 2% of my body weight in water every day. That means about one and a half liters minimum. But in these conditions, I'll need that much every hour. Look at the scale of this. The combination of searing heat and high humidity are beginning to take their toll. There's a spider there, a crucifix spider, and they're cool these just from the shape that where they sit in their prey in that cross like crucifix shape. And then all the web around it and the web they spin is actually amazing. It's actually 50 times stronger uh, than steel. And I was taught in the military you can actually use uh, spider's webs to help with wounds. And what you do, you collect it all up, bunch it up, put it in the wound and it'll help coagulate the blood. It acts as like a field dressing. Uh, but this spider here, it does have some poison in it, uh, but not enough really to, uh, to harm. It might just give a little nip. And so much of survival is about opportunistic hunting and this is edible. Here we go. And grab him here, squeeze his head. And then put him in. Ugh. Just taste of kind of guts and pus and brain. Spiders and other insects are always a good source of protein, but it's not really enough. After the hot plains, finding this water is pure joy. And now I feel like I'm entering a new phase of my journey. I joke not when I say it is searingly hot here and this water is just God sent. Oh.
Aborigines believe that the rainbow serpent made the rivers as he traveled across the land. And that serpent is a symbol for both the creative and destructive forces of nature. These river gorges are testimony to that power. All around me are signs of flash floods and debris. Now in the wet season, the risks of these floods are even higher. Where there is water, there is light, and not all of it is friendly. There's an olive python. Let's just get him out for you. Here we are, you come, there you come. We just leave his head on the ground. Uh, they're always calmest. I've only got the head on the ground like that. But this is, yeah, this is a pretty common snake in Australia. And here we go, we just get his head. Yeah, he'll probably live off like rodents, skinks, even other actually other small snakes. And one thing there's no shortage of in Australia are snakes. In fact, I think it's something like 21 of the 25 most poisonous snakes in the world are actually in Australia. Uh, but look at this, this for me is a real find. This isn't one of the poisonous ones. This is one I can eat. And I'm actually gonna keep him alive uh, until I'm ready to eat him. But that's great. That's the protein I need and he's dinner. In these conditions, food will go off within just half a day. So keeping it alive makes the most sense. It's getting late in the day now, and I've got food, I've got water here, and it'd be a good time to think about uh, finding some shelter. But over there, it looks like a bit of a ledge. I just need to cross this river with this guy. The snake shouldn't mind getting wet, as long as I keep its head out of the water. The Aborigines have always lived in harmony with the land, only taking what nature can maintain. And today, they're the only people in Australia allowed to kill indigenous species. The one exception is when you're in a survival situation. Now I've got a safe place to rest, I can kill my dinner. And the easiest way to do this is to swing the snake through the air, smashing its head against the rocks. It's quick and it's painless. As it's so humid, I don't need a shelter tonight. I'm gonna to sleep on this ledge under the stars. I've gutted and I've skinned the snake and I've got it cooking just on a little, like a skewer. And I just can't wait to eat this. It's gonna be really good protein, but I know snake, this is gonna taste delicious. All snakes in the world are edible, but make sure you don't eat the guts or the head, which contains the poison sacs. It's also important to cook the meat thoroughly, as it can contain tongue worm. This can cause vomiting and, in the worst cases, death. And actually, that's just delicious. It's kind of definitely very chickeny, but good. And this is actually how the Aboriginals would hunt. You know, they'd, they'd take what the land would give them and no more. And the way it's been the same for me, you know. Came across the snake and that's given me just enough to keep going and keep moving. 